Humblebug. Some games were made for Halloween. Whether they feature a playfully spooky aesthetic, or they're a genuine horror game, with some games, it's obvious from the onset that they would be especially fun to play during this holiday in particular. However, there are a lot of other games that have moments that feel surprisingly spooky, like the mausoleum that I talked about before with my Gauntlet Dark Legacy video, where maybe a segment of the game's world or even just a single level has distinct Halloween vibes, separate from the tone of the rest of the game for the most part. Today, I want to talk about that phenomenon, levels in otherwise normal games that give off a particularly spooky Halloween vibe. I thought this would be a great way to cap off the holiday this year. First, we're going to start with a classic, but before I begin, make sure you let me know what your favorite Halloween moment was in a game, whether it was a horror game or not. If you've never played Earthbound but have seen the occasional gameplay, you'd probably assume that this is just a goofy modern day RPG where our main protagonist Ness travels along this cutesy, idyllic, Americanized environment fighting goofy foes like the new age retro hippie here. And for about 85% of the game, that assumption is entirely correct. But there's a specific part of that 15% of the game that I really want to talk about. When you enter the tunnel here in Tucson to hopefully connect yourself to the next town, Threed, you're intercepted by ghosts who warn you to go back, and eventually they will forcibly remove you from the tunnel if you press your luck. Okay, so I guess we're not going to Threed then. As you progress a bit in the game and make some things happen in Tucson and its surrounding areas, you eventually get the means to go through the tunnel and completely bypass the ghosts. But when you're dropped off in Threed, you may find yourself wanting to get in the van and go right back to Tucson. I remember as a kid actually being kind of scared of Threed. The music is really foreboding with that ominous bass line and the whole place just feels like this nightmare town. It's so different from Onet and Tucson. I'm not going to spoil who, but you gather pretty quickly that this place has been taken over somehow by something sinister. There are things like zombie dogs and reanimated puppets that you have to face off against, and after no one in the town is really able to give you any answers into why this is happening, you may find yourself venturing towards a graveyard in the middle of the night, which always results in zero consequences. Go into the forest and you're blocked off by these zombies here that just stare into your soul and give you the creeps. So much like the ghosts in the Tucson tunnel, you intelligently decide to walk away. It's at this moment where you begin to realize there are some real fiends out here in this town. Hell, when you defeat the zombie dogs, they don't just become tame like how every other enemy seems to do upon defeat. They quote, return to the dust of the earth. How metal is that? Tired and confused on your way back from the graveyard, you follow this mysterious woman you've never seen before into the hotel. But you quickly learn the hard way that things aren't what they seem here in Threed. Okay, I don't know about you, but I was kind of scaring myself telling that ghost story, so let's cover something a little more fun. While Mario Kart has some spooky levels as well, I wanted to talk about a kart racer you probably know a lot less about. Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transformed is generally a bright and cheery game, featuring a surprisingly wide selection of many of Sega's all-time greatest characters. While I've honestly not found a single level that's bad, the Kyrian Mansion Graveyard Gig level, which is from Sega's campy horror arcade light gun masterpiece House of the Dead is easily one of my favorites. In true House of the Dead fashion, you'll catch the zombies here in a lot of goofy situations, which contrasts quite a bit with how genuinely frightening the ambiance of this estate is. There's a huge gargoyle clawing at the roof above who just misses you as you drive by, there's this spooky science lab right up Frankenstein's alley where you might get electrocuted, and a giant spider who drops his little spidey minions on you. And, as the name Racing Transformed implies, on the final lap you'll find yourself driving through the wine cellar in the basement and into the radioactive sewers that run beneath this haunted place. The orange lights of the building are iconic, and honestly, this is my favorite horror-themed map in a kart racer, well above anything Mario Kart offers. I've also got to give a shout out to Death Adder's Lair. This map is from Golden Axe, and you'll start things off riding across waves of lava as you enter the mouth of this evil cavern with giant skeletons over Head. It genuinely feels like you're flying and driving through Mordor and gives that sort of gauntlet dark legacy medieval Halloween vibe but in a kart racer which is just awesome. 
And okay, I'm gonna throw one more racing game at you while I'm on the topic before we jump into the next one. Coincidentally, another Sega racing game too. While typically known for its Sega blue skies and colorful aesthetics, Outrun Coast to Coast has one map in particular that might give you the heebie-jeebies. Likely inspired by the haunted forests of Transylvania, my first thought when driving through here was that I felt like I was driving through a forest on the outskirts of Silent Hill. The aptly named haunted forest is so foggy and dreary and is lit only by torchlight. Even Seeing these hot air balloons pass by as I went to run another lap didn't cheer me up. And to make things even scarier, while I was capturing footage for this, I was racing against my ghost. That's right. My go! While this next one is the oldest game out of the bunch, this is actually the game out of this list that I played for the first time most recently. I got the Mega Man Legacy Collection not too long ago because I found myself having a hankering for some old school NES vibes and I decided that now's the time for me to finally experience the classic Mega Man series. So far I blasted my way through Mega Man 1, 2, and 3, and then went and beat Mega Man 2 again, and now I'm working my way through Mega Man 4. I went in blind and chose to go against Skullman, purely off of his aesthetics. I mean, just look at this guy. When you first drop down into his stage, it's nothing too scary, but admittedly it is a little crazy to be running along a spine and rib bones. While at first you come across some typical enemies you'd expect to see in a Mega Man game, like these little tank dudes and this floating guy, once you climb the ladder, you'll meet the first robot in Halloween attire that I can recall facing off against in a Mega Man game and that is the bone-throwing Skeleton Joe. These guys are really reminiscent of Mario's Dry Bones enemies. If you shoot them, they'll temporarily collapse into a pile of bones, but wait too long and they'll reform back from the dead and start tossing femur left and right. If you hit them with a charge shot though, they'll be gone for good. Other than that, I mean we get ambushed by Rouge the Bat, but that's not really too spooky yet, right? But then you get outside. And as you inch closer to the Skullman's lair, the skies turn to a bright, ominous red, and you encounter an area littered with skeletons. In the process of making this video, I was searching up some Mega Man content and came across a video from Retro Break where he mentioned how this level scared him as a kid, and I can totally see why. Anyway, if you manage to make your way through that, you'll find yourself to be met with a terrible fate in the face of Skullman himself. What genuinely made me nervous fighting Skullman, and what also made me decide that he's gotta be one of my favorite Mega Man robot masters of all time, is that if you enter the room and don't do anything, he doesn't either. The dude just stares you down. He's just standing there, menacingly! He has that horror movie Michael Myers type of confidence where he's just going to sit there and watch you tremble since he knows you have nowhere else you can go. If you shoot, he'll make a jump for you and admittedly this caused me to panic because I didn't expect him to be able to jump across the room like Jeepers Creepers or something. He'll then stay right on top of you and he'll make short work of you if you don't understand his pattern. To make things worse, he can summon Skull to create a shield that blocks all of your incoming attacks and again he just stares at you knowing you can't do do anything. Eventually, I figured him out, and while I haven't beaten him without taking a hit yet, I am proud to say I managed to beat him pellets only. He is tanky though, especially if you're like me and only use your regular buster attacks because you didn't realize that this was the game to introduce the charge shot until after you spent an hour trying to fight this guy. Footage of this fight was sped up by several times here, but just know that with normal pellets only, it took me almost three minutes to finally knock this guy down for good. And his durability honestly just makes him that much scarier. <laughs> And now we're going to move from 1991 to 1992 with Super Mario Land 2. Here I'll be playing the DX version, and if you're curious about that, you can watch this video after if you'd like to learn more about that version of the game. Again, while generally a bright and cheery game for the most part, as you would expect given that this is a Mario game, Super Mario Land 2 does have some spooky elements, and it does some things that have really never been done again in other Mario games. You'll see that immediately as you enter the game's pumpkin zone, the witch ran Halloween zone. Take, for instance, this Goomba wearing a Jason Voorhees mask complete with a knife stuck in his head. This is a real thing, I swear, even in the official original Game Boy version of this game. 
you'll run through this lantern lit underground area first, dodging spike traps and even vampires. Then you'll run through a graveyard filled with spirits and ghouls, a haunted mansion with ghost goombas, and as you approach the witch's lair, you'll platform off of her fire lit cauldrons, which is extra funny once you get the rabbit ears power up. It's like she's prepping you to be just another bunny to add to her stew. Those suspicions were confirmed for me in the boss fight, where you face off against her in her kitchen. She shoots fireballs and the cauldron lids pop up from below you and try to crash down on you against this backdrop where you can see bones hanging next to her cookware. It's it's awesome. Even after all of these years, Pumpkin Zone is still one of the most memorable areas in a Mario game in my opinion. Okay, Mario, Mario Golf, Golf Story. There's my segue. One of the first games I played and beat on my Nintendo Switch was Golf Story, and this must have been like six years ago now. It's a really charming golf game with RPG elements, believe it or not, and I highly highly recommend this game to anyone, even to those who are not a fan of golf. I mean, I'm not a golfer, but this game's humor and aesthetics appealed to me so much that I took a gamble and I'm so glad that I did. While you mostly golf in somewhat familiar settings that you could likely imagine, like the well-worn grove, Cheeky Beak Peak, and the, well, Lurker Valley sounds a little creepy, Oak Manor is the Halloween-themed area of the game, and you can even see it advertised front and right centered on its key art here. I'm not going to spoil the story, the golf story here, but this area of the map is filled with jack-o'-lanterns, gravestones, a haunted mansion, a distinct purple hue to its grass, goth girls, and ghosts. Considering it's been six years now, I kinda sucked when I stepped foot onto these hallowed grounds again after all of this time, but eventually I dusted off the cobwebs and was hitting some birdies. Oak Manor was easily one of my favorite areas of the game, and it features probably the most hilarious boss fight that I can think of. It's a shame that Sports Story apparently wasn't as good. And for my last handful of fun Halloween levels in otherwise normal games, I'm going to throw some 3D platformers at you. A Hat in Time already has some Halloween vibes with its witchy little main protagonist, but again, this is for the most part a pretty charming, harmless little game. Oh, and ignore Mario and Luigi there, you didn't see that, you didn't see that. But one area of the game, one that you encounter pretty early on, is the Subcon Forest. In this level, you sign your soul away in this contract with an unknown shadowy being, and the only way to ensure you can keep your soul is to do certain tasks for him. What kind of tasks, you ask? Oh, nothing, you're just doing stuff like... Bringing these fiery fox spirits to their eternal resting place by gathering these porches that apparently trap people and their souls into them and then grabbing those porches and throwing them to a fire as some sort of ritual, maybe a sacrifice so that the fiery fox spirits can be forgiven for their sins and move on into oblivion. You know, just stuff like that. Again, the vibe of this place is just off the charts, and later levels will see you going through areas like a swamp, using your spirit mask to see the ghosts around you like this one ringing the bell here, and if you explore deep enough inside this crazy well, you may find a hook shot that you can use to swing around spider man style, and it works a lot better than the one in Demon Turf. Ah, this game was so good. While these next two games don't really have a ton of story going on, Super Mario Bros. Wonder and Astro Bot are the games I want to talk about next, and I know those are newer games, so if you want to head out now due to minor spoilers, I understand. Just make sure you leave me a like if you've made it this far, and let me know about one of your favorite Halloween moments in gaming down below. Okay, ready? Upshroom Downshroom was a very memorable gaming level for me last year, as I played Mario Wonder Day 1 in October 20th of 2023 when we were fast approaching Halloween. It starts off with this super cozy pumpkin patch in autumn type of vibe, and you can even squash the pumpkins which is so fun. Giant mushrooms tower overhead in the background, and I, I don't know, this is just easily one of the coziest Mario levels. I mean even those little Goombas are seeping which is one of those many features Mario Wonder brought to the table regarding its characterizations that I love loved to see. But then you ingest the Wonder Flower, and within microseconds your serotonin levels skyrocket and you start hallucinating, and this cozy mushroom canopy turns into a Halloween-themed nightclub dance party. Which, if you haven't played this game, just know that Mario and friends experience lots of nightclub dance parties this time around. Wonder Flowers must be dope. I will never forget the idiotic smile I had on my face as I saw this level transform and bounce and bob, and seeing the pumpkins turn into jack-o'-lanterns was just a perfect moment for me 
during the week leading up to Halloween last year. This level was actually the one that inspired this whole video, believe it or not. Mario Wonder came out a few months before I started my channel, so it felt a little weird to try to talk about it then, but a year later this time of year, I have the perfect excuse to talk some Mario Wonder. There is also a level where you run away from King Boo as well, and it's pretty cool, but the unexpected element of Upshroom Downshroom's transformation still takes the cake for me as my favorite Halloween moment in Super Mario Bros. Wonder. Last, but obviously not least, I've got to talk about Astrobot. Though this game actually has a handful of haunted levels, I'm only going to talk about Spooky Time since the other haunted levels are ones that you might not find on your first playthrough as they're hidden, while this one is one of the main missions that you're pretty much guaranteed to play. Spooky Time sees you barreling into this massive gravestone with a haunted castle in the background lit only by the moon and its own otherworldly green adornments. There are these mummy-wrapped enemies, pumpkin enemies, spooky specters, not to mention a lot of fall leaves that you can delightfully spin around, but the true highlight of this level lies within the main gameplay mechanic that it chooses to rely upon and that's the slow-mo VR goggles. This power-up runs on a timer, but luckily for you, it allows you to stop time for those around you, which is perfect because the enemies juggle knives and throw all kinds of dangerous stuff your way, and while you can avoid some of it without the time stop as you can see here, it's so fun to use this power-up to cause mayhem knowing your enemies literally didn't see it coming. And this all culminates into the final encounter where this massive ghost animates a whirlwind of objects around itself and you have to creatively platform your way to it using the time stop mechanics to crush his crystal ball and get him out of there. Astrobot's Spooky Time might be my favorite Halloween level that I've ever played in a 3D platformer, if not in all of gaming. It's a perfectly executed level from start to finish, it nails the vibe that I'm talking about here, and it's something I can see myself replaying every Halloween. So I really hope you had as much fun watching this video as I did making it. These are my favorite Halloween levels hidden away within otherwise normal games. Please let me know your favorite Halloween moments in gaming or what your favorite games to play during the Halloween season are, and I sincerely hope you guys have a safe and sufficiently spooky holiday this year. If you're still here, thanks so much for watching, and as always, stay humble. That's right, my ghost!